Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. Before we go into more controls on a form, I want to take a little bunny trail here because we've been working on this option group and option buttons, otherwise known as radio buttons, in the previous screencast where we can choose a different theme for each employee in this database. We've created the option group, we've created the radio buttons. We know these radio buttons are bound to numeric values that represent red, white, blue, green, and yellow. And if we look at that in the employees table, here's the field that I added for the team, and here are the values. Four is green, and three is blue, and one is red. And you may be saying to yourself, I see a one-to-many relationship here. I see that one team can be related to many employees. So shouldn't we be creating a lookup table for this purpose? Yes, we should. That's exactly what I want to have you see, is that any time you see repeated values in a field, you know it's a good candidate for a lookup table. So let's create that and connect it to our employees table and make sure that the team names appear here, which are much more meaningful to you than the team numbers. And so let's close the employees table and let's create a little lookup table and table design view. And I'm going to do a team number as the primary key field. It's going to have a numeric data type. And if I use this field to be my primary key field and to connect to my employees table, I have to make sure that the same data type and field size for these number fields to make sure that those match. And given that our team numbers are only small little numbers. I don't need the field size of long integer. I can crank that down to the smallest field size for a number, which is byte. Now, if I do that and I want to use this for that connecting field, I'm going to have to save this table. I'm going to call it LU teams for lookup teams. I'm going to close it temporarily here and go into my employees table and design view and make sure that that team field has that same field size. I'm going to crank that down to byte because that's the smallest size for a number field. Save and close. Okay, back to LU teams. We not only need that team number to make that connection between this team lookup table and the employees table, but I also need the team name, and that's going to be short text. And I'm going to save and look at this table in sheet view. And my first team was team number one. It's red, white, blue green, and I think I even have a yellow team now. All right, so here's my little lookup table. It simply got the numbers to do the connection with the one team number, can have many employees, and the team name. Save, close. Now there's a couple ways to connect the lookup teams table with the employees table. I could go through the relationships and do it here, or I could go into that foreign key field in the employees table, go into design view, and use my lookup wizard to both set my lookup properties as well as build the relationship. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the lookup wizard and look up the values from another table or query. I'm going to look up table as LU teams next. Which fields do I want? I want both fields. I'm not going to set a specific sort order. I'm looking at the data now, red, white, blue. If I uncheck the hide key column, then I'm going to see just the team names, not the team numbers, even though the team numbers are technically stored in that field. And that's what I want to do. I want to hide that team number because the numbers don't mean anything to me. It's the team names that are meaningful to me as the data entry person and also on report. Next, what label do I want for the lookup field? Team is fine. Do I want to enable data integrity? Again, that means that I won't be able to enter team six unless it's in that LU teams table so that I can have no employees assigned to a team that doesn't already exist in the LU teams table. That's very important to prevent orphan records in the employees table. And finish and save. And now when I look at those teams in my data sheet, I've got the team names as opposed to the team numbers. And let's look at the relationships now, database tools, relationships, I'm going to click my All Relationships button just in case any new relationships have been created since the last time I saved the screen. And indeed, they have. The LU Teams table now has a one to many parent child relationship to the employees table. And the connecting field is the Team No field in the LU Teams table 
It's the primary key field, so it's always on the one side. And the team field in the employees table, which is a foreign key field to that relationship. So now, any time I add a new team with a new team number, it would automatically show up on any data sheet or form that uses this table as a lookup table. And let's just try it. Let's add a number six, and let's go with the team name of Frank, and let's close the LU teams table. And now when I look at that field through the eyes of the employees table, and I've got lookup properties on this team field, see I already see pink there. So anytime I look at this table, anytime I have a query that pulls the team foreign key field into it, or anytime I have a form where I pulled this foreign key field, this team field from the employees table onto the form as a combo box, the values in the LU teams lookup table are automatically going to populate that combo box. That's why when we get back to the previous screencast where I showed you how to use an option group and option buttons, you probably don't want to use these controls if your values change often because these controls, this radio button and this label that represents the value are not going to automatically update the same way a combo box control would automatically update the team field. And to prove this out, let's just add the team field also as a combo box, and we'll put it right beside that option group just to show the difference. So I'm gonna go into design view. I'm going to open up my add existing fields pane and grab that team field out of the employees table drag it onto the form surface here, and the team field automatically wants to be a combo box because it has lookup properties. This option group is also bound to the team field, and this combo box is bound to the team field. And let's see which one works better. On the personal info tab, I've got red, white, blue, green, yellow. But on the combo box, I also have pink. If I change to white, or if I make any change in either one of the controls, of course, the other is automatically going to update as well because both of these controls, the combo box and the option group, are bound to that team field. But the point here is the combo box automatically updates, whereas the option group does not. So option groups are great. They're a one-click, very fast solution for a small number of values for a field when those values don't often change. Because if you add a new value or if one of the values change, you're then updating any form that uses an option group and option buttons bound to that field, whereas the values in a combo box automatically maintain themselves. Thank you.